Hi everyone, Whitney Lowe here with another of our Clinical Insights videos and today we're going to be talking about active engagement techniques. Now, you know in our profession we have just hundreds and hundreds of different modalities and this can get awful confusing sometimes trying to even figure out what some of these things are. So active engagement techniques is just another name for some things that are a different approach to the way you might be doing some techniques already. But I want to give this a bit more of a conceptual framework to understand how you might make some variations to these different methods and how you can use them most effectively, especially for treating pain and injury conditions. So let's take a deep dive, take a look at what they are. The first place I want to start is talking a little bit about how and when you might use these things. These particular types of approaches or techniques are most effective when you're dealing with clients who have pain and injury conditions. I don't generally advocate doing a lot of this type of work for the general relaxation massage client because a lot of people just kind of want to relax. They don't want to get into active participation. So these things are going to be mostly aimed at those people who are really trying to address some type of pain and injury complaint. Now, the other thing to note here is there is no formal standardized definition of active engagement techniques. So what you're getting here is my opinion and perspective on what these techniques are. So basically, I refer to active engagement techniques as those methods that use some type of client movement in conjunction with what the practitioner is performing. And most of the time this involves some degree of active movement and that's why we refer to them as active engagement techniques. But it can also include client passive movement where the therapist is performing a movement of the client's limb while some type of massage technique is performed. So it's some type of performance of massage technique while there is movement, either active or passive movement, going on with the client. And of course, the practitioner is directing how that movement is going to be performed. One of the things that becomes immediately apparent when you start talking about incorporating movement along with massage is, as a practitioner, you really need to have a good understanding of kinesiology and movement principles to understand what type of tissues are being engaged in various different movements and how you want to have your massage technique work in conjunction with those particular tissues that are being engaged. If it's some type of pain complaint you're working on or if it's some type of specific goal that you're trying to get a tissue more activated or something like that, you got to know what's being used in those different movements to work it effectively. Now, as most everyone knows, we're still a long way from having good research about massage therapy's physiological effects to know exactly how we get the results that we get when we're performing treatments. So do know that a lot of these concepts or ideas about what's happening during active engagement techniques are extrapolations from what we know about other physiological effects of various different types of treatment methods. So a couple of things that I want to zero in on with the active engagement techniques. One is the active component. So when we are doing active engagement techniques and having the client move their limbs in relation to what we're doing, that integrates the neurological system a lot more in terms of teaching it effective, safe, and pain-free movement. So if you're trying to get your client to moving forward in their rehabilitation process from an injury complaint, and you can do safe and effective movement of a particular area while you're manipulating that tissue, it sends a very positive response back to the nervous system, which can be reinforced, and that greatly helps in the rehab process. So getting a client to know that a movement is safe and effective and they can do it and you stimulate the proprioceptors and the other sensory receptors to what's being done with your hands at the same time, it really helps make those techniques more effective. Another piece of that puzzle, the neurological puzzle, has to do with getting active proprioception sort of retrained in a number of instances. So one of the things that we're really trying to do is to sort of wake up some of those neural pathways of a particular movement to get maybe a better movement pattern even sort of reinforced and educated like you know if there's a postural challenge or somebody's doing something where they're recruiting certain muscles that maybe aren't the ideal biomechanical pattern by engaging these active engagement principles and active engagement techniques sometimes we can help enhance the restoration of the ideal biomechanical balance in these areas as well the next piece has to do with the, the depth of penetration of pressure with some active engagement techniques. This is one that has distinct advantages for you as the practitioner because, you know, a lot of times we're trying to work on deeper tissues with more specificity. And we try to do that with a small contact surface, maybe like with a fingertip or a thumb or a pressure tool. And we're trying to press in on some tissue and get some type of response or a particular effect in there. 
And the way to do this more effectively is sometimes with more pressure. And that's more effort on the part of the therapist, as well as sometimes a bit uncomfortable for the client. Active engagement techniques take that step a little bit farther down the road in that when a muscle is being actively contracted and the client is doing the active contraction, when you put that same level of pressure on that muscle, the increased density of the muscle fibers because it's under contraction magnifies the impact of that pressure straighter down and more directly underneath your fingertips instead of dissipating it into the soft tissues. What that means from our perspective as a practitioner is you don't have to press as hard to get the same or even better effects directly down into those tissues that you're working. So this is a very distinct advantage for you as the practitioner, and it lets you get a lot more specific and targeted with your treatment effects. So let's look at a couple of ideal situations of when we might use these particular types of techniques. One of the things that we do note is that a lot of these active engagement techniques, as I mentioned before, help with sort of targeted precision of your work. So targeted precision of the impact directly where you're working. So when you're trying to get, you know, let's say a muscle that's maybe not quite as easy to get to, by doing the active engagement techniques, you recruit that muscle and its surrounding synergist muscles that are working together and get that integrated pattern more effectively uh, sort of enhanced. So this is one way that that targeted treatment during the active movement can be very beneficial. I mentioned before the great advantage in using these active engagement techniques in decreasing the therapist's effort. That's a big factor here too because there's a lot of times you might have somebody with very large musculature or you know a larger body size and you don't want to overwork your hands or fingers or thumbs doing this type of thing so you can do less uh, intense work with or the same intensity of work with much less effort on your part. That's a big advantage in the treatment process. One of the other ways I really like to use these active engagement techniques is in treating difficult muscles or muscles that are hard to access. Take, for example, the tibialis posterior. It's wrapped around the back side of the tibia, and there are several other muscles overlying it, and it is difficult to target that muscle specifically, but it's a really important muscle to treat in many lower extremity dysfunctions. So recruiting that muscle during active movement with an active engagement technique is a great way to get more effective pressure and more effective work directly on that tibialis posterior, and it gets some great results. One of the other things I really like about these active engagement techniques is the active client participation because you get a person actively participating in the role of the treatment that you're giving to them. And this active participation and movement reinforces those neurological patterns of good, effective sort of reworking of those muscles and getting a good safe movement pattern happening again. And a little bit more participation from the client gets a little bit more buy-in about the benefits of what they're receiving there. So that's a really effective way to get that client-therapist relationship working to your benefit in the treatment room with these techniques. Now there's a couple other fine points I just want to go over here about when you would use different types of techniques because there's all kinds of different methods that might fall into this realm of active engagement techniques. There's you know, passive movements without any client engagement where you're doing some type of technique. There's active methods that might use the client's movement alone. There's active movements with resistance where the client might be performing a motion, but they're doing it with additional resistance loads. Those would all be key factors that would be beneficial variations on doing effective active engagement techniques. So let's look at a couple different steps and where that might be done. In one of our upcoming Clinical Insights videos, we're going to be talking about the ladder of engagement model. And this is a great model for looking at active engagement techniques because as a person comes in with some type of pain or injury complaint, they might have a super severe problem and you need to be very careful and cautious about the way you do certain types of techniques with them. And at that stage, you're using minimal client involvement and minimal levels of active engagement work. But that person later on down the road as they've gotten much better is trying to recoup and get back to ideal activity activity, then you might be using a lot more of the active engagement techniques or using them with a greater degree of intensity. For example, using some additional resistance load when you're doing some of the active movements. We'll spell that out in that ladder of engagement video a little bit more clearly so that makes sense. But the idea is there's numerous variations on the way you can use these different active engagement techniques. And the beauty of this model is it turns just a few simple techniques into multiple different ways that you can use them and be much more effective with them in the clinic as well. Another key benefit or method for using these is when you're dealing with muscle injuries that might not show up under certain circumstances. 
For example, we have muscles that, you know, they are very powerful, very strong, and they don't recruit a whole lot of muscle fibers when you do a minimal amount of contraction or when you're doing some of the work on them. You might want to put a more significant load on those muscles, like have additional resistance with resistance bands or handheld weights or some other type of increased muscle recruitment during the actual techniques that you're performing. For these techniques, the active engagement methods work exceptionally well to really get that muscle back to its optimal function again by using even higher resistance loads at the same time that you're doing your massage treatments. A very effective way, especially in the rehabilitation of muscle injuries at the later stages of the rehabilitation process. So that's a brief recap on this whole idea of active engagement techniques. And again, there's so many different ways that you can use these methods. And I would really encourage you, once you get down the basic concepts of how to use active engagement methods, then it really helps you just figure out lots of different ways that you can kind of invent variations and make your own unique approach to using these methods. But I find them so very effective in helping people get back to ideal activity levels and pain-free movement throughout their life. So that's a brief overview on the idea of active engagement techniques. I find these methods really helpful and valuable in the treatment room to get exceptional results with all kinds of different pain and injury complaints. And we're trying to get people back to activity and back to movement. That's really the goal. So incorporating that movement into the rehabilitation process and into your treatment strategies is a great way to get there. The thing I love about these active engagement techniques is there's so many different variations on the way you can do these techniques and just take one simple method and then use active movement or passive movement or active movement with resistance and it turns it into multiple different techniques that you can use in a lot of different scenarios. So this is a great way to expand your treatment toolkit, keep yourself engaged and interested while you're working in people and really get great results for them as well. Now if you'd like to learn more about active engagement techniques in action, how we might use them to treat a number of different specific pain and injury complaints. We go over these in great detail in all of our online orthopedic massage courses over at the Academy of Clinical Massage. So come on over, join us there, take a look at that, and see how you might be able to use some of these active engagement techniques to help your clients. And let's work together to help people get out of pain. We'll see you over there.